Hi guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So, today we want to take a look at the drum view in Studio One, which Impact XT, our drum sampler, is going to automatically, but you can also toggle to it, and some of you guys might not be aware of that yet. So, for this example, I want to take a look at my trusted analog Rhythme from Electron, which is a fantastic drum synthesizer that also comes with a plugin that you can use. And this is the perfect example where you'd like to use the drum view instead of the classic piano roll. It's probably best if I just demonstrate this to you really quickly. So, we have the Impact XT, which is our drum sampler in Studio One. I could just insert that and I get, you know, a standard kind of drum kit that I can play right away. And if I would double click in this loop range to create a part, an instrument part for it, you see that we have this drum view available. And this is different to the classic piano roll that you might be used to in that you can hide all of the pitches that are not part of your kit because often if you have like a drum kit, you don't have as many sounds assigned to your kits as you have pitches available on the piano roll. So why would you need to see all of these empty pitches here? And not just that, but you can also color code, hide or show additional pitches. You can rename them or even sort them in different orders. All of that, of course, not possible in the piano roll. So that's pretty cool for Impact XT users, but did you know that this drum view is available for all of your virtual instruments? So even if you're using Superior Drama by TuneTrack, maybe even the analog rhythm like I am here from Electron, you still have this view available, which is just great when working with any kind of percussive sounds. The piano roll can be very easily toggled to the drum view just like that. In my example, I don't have the impact, but I actually have, you know, my analog rhythm assigned to an instrument track. And if I toggle here to the drum view, you can see that I've already prepared a map custom made for this specific drum machine. I labeled all of these exactly like the paths on the analog rhythm, so I know exactly which paths to play and where I'm inserting the notes. And I also color coded them. For instance, I put my bass drum in orange here, my snare and my collapse in green. And this is the kind of uh, color scheme that I go for with any kind of drums, so uh, that I immediately recognize where I can insert kick drums and so forth. To do this, to make your own color coding, you can just click here on the wrench icon to enter the edit page. And here you can choose which of the pitches you want to show, which ones you want to hide. You probably just want to show the ones that are actually assigned to sounds. You can uh, rename them any, any way you like. I could also call the snare, for instance, but I went with the exact uh, namings that I have on the analog rhythm pads. And once that's done, you can also click here to assign a color for each individual pad. As soon as you're happy with your color coding, your namings, your show height states, you can simply click on the wrench again to exit the configuring mode and then save this as a preset for instant recall later. Uh, you can also hide any unused pitches with a click of one button. And uh, you also have a couple of other options here, uh, like for example, sort the order around. That is totally possible, just drag that in any order you want. Another great advantage of drum view is that you can insert your steps without having to consider the length. You can just hold down command on a Mac or control on a Windows PC and then enter your steps this way. And they would always be set to the currently set quantize value. If that would be quarter notes, now I would set them for quarter notes and so forth. If I hold command again on an already existing note, then I can very simply delete them. If I hold down Alt or Option on the Mac at the same time, I can also draw in multiple, which is great for hi-hats, for instance. And if I do that down here in the automation lanes, same thing, Command and Option on the Mac or Control and Alt on the Windows PC, I can also draw in lines to immediately change my velocities. If I hold down the same keyboard shortcut here, then you can see I can very quickly insert notes with full velocity. And if I don't do that, then it would always be the set velocity that I have uh, here as my default on the left. So that's just a couple of basics about the drum view. There's not much else to it, really. Uh, it's just a very nice view to work on, I think, really tailor-made to a drum workflow. And I can encourage you enough to try it out. Certainly preferable to the piano roll, at least for percussives.
Last but not least, I wanted to mention a question that I get time and time again. Hey, Gregor, why would you use like the drum view in Studio One when you already have the sequencer available inside of your drum machine? To which I like to say, why not both? It's so much fun to use both at the same time, not counterproductive at all. I can just bounce that together into one file once it's done. So I like to do my pattern right here on the analog rhythm. And then when I'm done, I like you know to just add a couple of notes in the drum editor as well to just add that little bit of extra that's very clunky to do directly here on the unit. Give it a shot, see how you like it and see you next time.